would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you today who have logged on to our course. You are all very much welcome to our evening session where we are continuing with the advanced investment appraisal. Today we want to start looking at the issue of foreign investments. Today we want to start looking at the issue relating to foreign investments where you invest outside your country, what happens? What are some of the things that are going to, we have to deal with? The unique thing is the issue of the currency or exchange rate. Inevitably, inevitably there'll be more than one currencies. So how do we get, how do we deal with the challenge of exchange rates? So this is an item which is, you can say that it is unique to this topic. This item is unique to this topic, the issue of the currency. The other issue is the double taxation. How do you deal with the issue of double taxation? Yes, where you have invested outside, you have suffered a tax. You have paid tax. What happens when that money comes in? Where you are based, you have already paid some tax. So what happens now when this money comes to your home country? Are you going to recognize the fact that he you have already paid some tax or not? Are we going to give you credit for the tax that you have already paid or you suffered already? On what basis are we going to do so? The other issue is uh, the head office. The head office may send some components. So they may transfer some components. They may do some work. Sometimes they may give a loan. So how do we treat these items where the head office is trying to make uh, some money on the project. So those are the items that we're going to discuss. Now what I've done is I've chosen a very basic question, very, very basic question. And as we go through this basic question, we want to see what are the items of recap. So I want to recap certain items and also learn some new techniques in the question that I've chosen. So the question we're looking at is an introductory question. In our next class, we'll be upgrading the question. We need to spend a bit of time to prepare for a question, a long question. So that's what we are going to do in our next class. So let us uh, get started. I hope uh, now you're getting used to the situation. To get the most out of these lectures, you need to get involved. I was very happy when I got a question from somebody. It's the first time really that I'm getting a question, who was it? There was somebody who asked very nice questions. I get so happy. Was it Mr. Kalalupa or who was it? Somebody who asked some questions. You know, when somebody asks questions, I get so happy. I find it very, very interesting and exciting when a student asks a question because, and a question which is detailed, which is focused on specific issues, because that gives me 
an indication that after lectures, people sit down, they look at our computations. Are these computations correct? Why didn't we do that? Why didn't we do that? So please, I want to encourage this culture of asking questions. I want to ask to encourage the culture of you asking questions or clarifications. Clarifications or just coming out in the open that me in the exam, when a question comes on over advanced investment appraisal, where I seem to have a problem, where I get lost, is here and there. Mr. Piri, please, can you attend to these issues? I seem to get lost. Or I haven't, there's something I haven't mastered about this. Or just you sharing the problems that you have on the topic. But we enable me to give better help. Okay, fine. So now uh, with um, those uh, few remarks, we can now get into our work. We can get into our question. And this is the question that we have. So let us uh, debrief this question. Let's do the debrief on this particular question. <clears throat> Let's do a debrief on the question which I've shared. What is the requirement? Assume you are a financial manager of this company. Evaluate alternative two using net present value, discounted payback, internal rate of return, and modified internal rate of return. Calculate the project duration for alternative two and discuss the significance of your results. If you are told that the duration for alternative one is 3.2. So this question is fact. Why? There is modified internal rate of return, which is an advanced investment appraisal technique. We don't cover modified internal rate of return in basic financial management. Number two, we cover the concept of bond duration. The same concept has come back here of duration. Again, this is advanced. Again, this is advanced. And then at the end of the day, I want to evaluate the two alternatives. So in this question, we want to review some basics. So as we go through, please try to take down some notes, try to identify some elements. So let's look at the, our question now. Look at some details in this question. Okay. What are the details? So let's uh, do a debrief. <clears throat> CD is a, a furniture manufacturer based in the UK. It manufactures a limited range of furniture products to a very high quality and sells to a small number of outlets worldwide. So where is the company based? Our company is based in the UK. Okay. 
At the recent meeting with one of its uh, major suppliers, it became clear that the market is changing. And the final consumer of CDs products is now most interested. It's now most interested in variety and choice rather than exclusivity and exceptional quality. CD is there for reviewing two mutually exclusive alternatives to apply to a selection of its products. Alternative number one, to continue manufacture, but to expand its product range and reduce its quality. The net present value, the internal rate of return, the modified internal rate of return of this alternative number one, that's what we have here. It's all given there. Alternative number two, to import furniture carcasses in flat packs from the US. Now there's an issue here. The imports would be in a variety of type of wood and unvanished. Seed would buy in bulk from its suppliers, US suppliers. Assemble and vanish the furniture and resell mainly to existing customers. An initial investigation into the potential of supply and cost of transportation has already been carried out by a consultant's entity at a cost of £75,000. EBSFD has provided estimates of net sterling and US cash flows for this investment. The net cash flows in the real terms are shown below. Now let's discuss a few things here. This is 5,000 that we have here. What is your reaction? This is 5,000 pounds. What is your reaction? What's the treatment? It's a sunk cost. It is a sunk cost. So what is the treatment? It should be ignored, isn't it? What is the lesson? The lesson is that in investment appraisal, even at this stage, the examiner may throw in what? They may throw in some irrelevant costs. And it's up to you to identify them and ignore them. Let's go. The FD has provided estimates of net sterling and US cash flows. These net cash flows are in real terms. In the language of inflation, what does real mean? What does real mean? It means the show, uh, inflation is not included. Excellent. Not inflated. When the figures are inflated, what expression is used? How are they described? They'll say that in nominal terms. The values are in nominal terms. Yes. Nominal or what? Nominal or what? Money terms. Money. Nominal or money terms. These are some of the basics that, of course, when we're entering questions, most of the questions on overseas investments, they have an element of inflation in them. Most of them, you're going to see that. 
most of them will have an element of inflation. Okay. Good. So we have uh, dealt with that. Let's proceed. What are the two methods of dealing with, in the, with inflation? What are the two methods of dealing with inflation in investment appraisal? Number one. What do we do? We can inflate all cash flows. And discount at money. rate. Another possibility is you can ignore inflation. And discount at So these are two possibilities. Which one is more common? That one. Which one are you going to use in the exam? Follow the company policy. That is one. Number two. Number two. When there are diff different inflation rates, when there are diff different inflation rates, What does it mean? Materials are inflating at 4%. Labor is inflating at 3%. Sales are inflating at 3.5%. If we have this situation now well, with different inflation rates, you must use option number one. Use option number one. Is that clear? The most common option in your exams is number one. How do you know that number one should be used? Well, company policy can be given to you. Or you just notice that the Materials are inflating at 4%. Labor is inflating at 3%. Sales are inflating at 3.5%. Then you know that if this is a situation, the correct approach is do what? To ignore inflation. That's what you must do. Okay. Can you repeat this statement? I've missed I've missed that. Um can you repeat that statement? If I, if I saw that point you, you you point you brought out. Yeah for uh, where we need to ignore inflation. We we are um where we have uh, variables.
inflating. at different rates. E.g. Materials, labor, sales, If we have got this type of a scenario, if you have a, this type of a scenario where these are inflating at different rates, what you must do is see, choose option number one where you inflate all the cash flows. And that's a scenario you're going to find in your questions. The questions may not state the policy, but you find that the variables are inflating at different rates. So what you do is inflate all of them. And once you inflate all of them, remember to use the nominal rate of return. The nominal rate of return is an inflated discount rate. Is that okay, Mr. Mfeo? That's, that's fine, thank you. All right. There's a small mathematical expression where we say, there's a small mathematical expression where we say one plus money rate equals one plus real rate multiplied by one plus inflation rate. So that is your money rate. That is your real rate. That is your inflation rate. Uh, at your level, no one will really take your task over this. We're just uh, reminding each other of these items. We want to start closing some of these items as we are heading for the exams. We want to start closing. So one plus money rate equals one plus real rate multiplied by one plus inflation rate. Okay. This is more of uh, basic financial management, but we don't want to leave any stone and tent. Huh? Now let us go to our question. CD evaluates all its investment using nominal, nominal, sterling cash flows and a nominal discount rate. So the company policy has been given then. So as far as inflation is concerned, what should we do according to this policy? Hmm? We need to inflate all the cash flows. All non-UK customers are involved in USD. USD nominal cash flows are converted to sterling at the forward rate and discounted at the nominal rate, at the UK nominal rate. For purposes of evaluation, assume that the entity has a three-year time horizon for investment appraisals. And then you've got some information here. So some of you are saying, hey, wait a minute, what of the exchange rate? That is the major item for a discussion tonight. That's the major item. So now let us take alternative number two and inflate the cash flows. 
Then after that, one talk about the exchange rate. What do we do about the exchange rate? So our major discussion here is, uh, what do we do about the exchange rate? That is an item that you want all of you to carry home. So as we end this lecture, I want everybody to be clear about what do we do about the exchange rate? Okay. Okay, so let's set up our worksheets. The worksheet that we're using is pretty short. It's not as congested. So please, all of you, I'm sure I can manage to open the worksheet. So from your various locations, please catch up with me as I push this in the worksheet there. Eh? Yeah, try to see if all of you can manage to use your spreadsheet and catch up with me in terms of speed. Eh? Catch up with me in terms of speed. Okay, so we go. And copy that. Have you opened your spreadsheets? Are you ready to move at the same pace as myself? There are a few numbers today, so let us see how we can run. There are a few numbers today, so let's see how we can run, okay? So let's talk about uh, the treatment of foreign cash flows. Let's talk about the treatment of uh, foreign currency cash flows. How do we deal with this? Let's discuss that. There are two possibilities. Post beat number one. You estimate the forward exchange rate and convert all foreign currency cash flows into domestic currency. That's what you do. And discount using domestic rate. And this is the most widely used. That's the most widely used. So the issue was on estimating forward rate. 
So how do we estimate the forward rate? We estimate the forward rate using the purchasing power Purchasing power parity theory. Which involves using inflation rate. Differential. Or you can use the interest rate parity theory. Which involves using interest rate differential. So that's what we can do. So that's how you estimate the forward rate. That's how you estimate the forward rate. How do we do that? Let's go. Let's go, let's see how we do that. So we say the forward rate. The forward rate, here's what we do people. We say the forward rate This forward rate is so many dollars on a single British pound can be calculated by taking the spot rate the spot rate is in the same format Multiply by one plus the inflation rate over one plus the inflation rate. Now, which inflation rate goes where? The inflation rate on the dollar will go on top. The inflation rate on the pound will go here. Have you seen what we have done? Have you seen what we have put once? Hmm? Have you seen what we have put once? The forward rate is going to be estimated by using the spot rate or the rate today. What is the format? Check the format. The format is so many dollars on a single pound. Even the spot rate I gave me so many dollars on a single pound. And notice the dollar comes here and the pound goes there. So this formula is, is looking at the difference in the inflation rates. That is why we say inflation rate differential. Under a currency with a high inflation rate, if a currency is going to have high inflation rate, that currency is going to depreciate. So 
a currency which is carrying a high level of inflation rate in comparison to the next currency is going to depreciate. You need more of that currency to buy any other currency. Okay. When we are using the difference in interest rates between the two currencies, here you still use I, but the I now will not stand for what? For inflation. It will stand for what? For interest. So the formula will not change. Eh? The formula will not change. Here used to be the I, but now this I, if you are using the interest rate differential, this I here will not stand for inflation. It will stand for the interest rate. Are we together, all of us? So this formula don't change it then. We don't change the formula. So now let's apply this to our question. We are going to apply this to our question. We want to learn how to calculate the forward rates given either inflation rate differential or interest rate differential. Is that okay? Let's move now. Let's pick your question. So the most common method is to convert, to convert all foreign cash flows, foreign currency cash flows in domestic currency. Let us look at our question. What does the question say here? What does CD do? All non-UK customers are involved in US. USD cash flows are converted to sterling at the forward rate. So this is in line with the, what we have discussed here. Now, how are we going to get the forward rate? Answer is here. Based on the recent economic forecast, inflation rates in the US are 4% the annum. In the UK, they are 3% the annum. The current exchange rate or the spot rate is it? one US dollar, 1.6 US dollar equals one pound. So then, going by what we have learned, let us now go here. Let's estimate our forward rates. Let us estimate our forward rates. So we go our forward rates. Our forward rates. Let's take our USD cash flows. Our USD cash flows people are here. 25, 2.6, 3.8, and 4.1. Okay. So you go 25, 2.6, I'll put back two zeros. 3.8, I put back two zeros, and 4.1. Okay, this one is 25 and it's a minus. What I want you to learn here is that's how to estimate the forward rate, same. Don't panic over discounting. You already know how to discount, isn't it? Hmm? So you people know how to discount already. That's not your problem. The problem that we want to deal with is how to estimate the forward rate. That's the problem that we want to discuss.
So we go, yeah. <clears throat> no, that's a bit too small for a number of us. Mm -hmm. That's our cash flow. Yeah, I can hear the keyboards being tapped. That's good. So then, how do we get our exchange rate? Yeah, zero, one, two, and three. Here, the exchange rate is 1.2. The exchange rate here is 1.6 dollars. Page pound. So what is the, the inflation rate differential? What's the inflation, inflation rate differential? Your formula is there. Can somebody tell us? What the, what's the inflation rate differential that you are going to use? So you take 1.6 here. So this is 1.6. $1.6 dollars per single pound. Then you multiply by one plus the inflation rate in the US. What's the inflation rate in the US? 4%. What's the inflation rate in the UK? 3%. So what is the inflation rate differential? So this is the inflation rate differential. So we are multiplying by the inflation rate differential. This differential this differential is 1.04 divided by 1.03. That's a differential. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, so this is the differential. So year one, so this was 1.06. So your differential, I'll put it here now, 1.04 by 1.03. Okay. So in two decimal places. So that's the differential. Are we together, all of us? So I'll multiply this by the differential, 1.04 divided by 1.03. And then I'll just pull it. There we are. Are we happy with the, the forward rates? Are we happy with the forward rates? Hmm? 
Um, so how did you call it? <laughs> yes, please. Um, you can show us, you can repeat how you put that. Um, I was trying to pull, but something came up. Ah, okay, here. There's somewhere in the corner here. Have you seen that? In the corner, right in the okay. corner there. Then you just pull it, then you just... Uh, Mm -hmm. For me, I wanted to say the formula on the 1.62. I think I'm a bit behind. I'm just multiplying by this figure. That's all. Okay, this one is one I'm multiplying. Mm, so we take this, multiply by that. Oh, you're multiplying by 1.04 over 1.03. Okay. Let's go. We pick this one. We pick that one, you multiply by 1.04 divided by 1.03. That's it. And then you, you copy it, you, you copy it across. Is that okay? Then, you bring in the inflation rate. We need to inflate these. What's the inflation rate? In the USA, these figures are growing. By what rate? 1.03. Oh, 4%, eh? In the US, 4%. Yes. Is that okay, people? So we increase. This one is a figure today. That's your year zero. So this is year zero. So that's your year zero. This one you multiply by 1.04. Is that okay? Then this one is 1.04 to the power two. We we'll multiply by 1.04 again. With all these now, you've got your cash flows. So the nominal cash flows. Nominal. Sterling. These are in sterling now. Hmm? Let me put in my symbol. Let me put in my symbol. Where is my symbol here? Hmm. Is it available or is not available? Hmm. Is my symbol here? Oh. What? Where is this coming from? That's okay. There is no problem with the big currencies of this world. So these cash flows now, let's go. That divide by that. Multiply by that. There we go. So you take the US cash flows, divide by the divide by the inflation.
Is that okay? The, we have some uh, cash flows on this project which come from the UK. Where are they? We've got these cash flows here, which are coming from the UK. Have you seen them? It's the same project. It's got a combination of cash flows. These are in GBP already. These cash flows are in GBP already. But what do you have to do to them? What do we have to do with these figures? Can I use them the way they are? Hmm? Need to inflate them. Excellent. So these are GBP. What's the inflation factor? Hmm? 3%. Excellent, well done. Uh, you guys are doing very well. Mm. The week is ending, but you still have energy. That's very good. So let's go. This one is year one, year two, year two. We take this, multiply by 1.03, okay? There we are, people. Please, if you're not okay with anything, maybe I'd dropped off. Just let me know in case we have dropped off. I dropped, I dropped off. At which point? I'm, I'm a little bit behind. On uh, which item now? Here, we'll, we'll start uh, from here. On inflation. Let, let's start from here. When we're working on inflation. Okay. So let's go. These figures were in real terms. These figures were in real terms. These are figures that I've copied. Where did I get these figures from? Let's go. I got these figures from here. I've just put back some three zeros. These are the figures that I have here. These figures are inflating at 3%. Now, all these figures, all these figures are at today. So this one, I will inflate it only once. This one, I inflate it twice. This one, I inflate it three times. That's why we may have been behind. And that is why we have got these figures. That one, that one, and that one. And when you inflate them, what do you have now? Is that okay? That's fine. It's okay. Eh? Please, let's be asking questions. Mm. Let's be asking questions so that when we go to the bigger questions, we say, look, we've discussed inflation, we've discussed exchange rates. Let's now, let's just run. So with these figures now, what can you do? We can now bring them on board. So let's bring them on board. Let's bring them on board, these figures. Here, the UK cash flows, we call them UK cash flows. So we come here. Equals e 
There we are. These are UK cash flows. So now we've got the net. I'm going to check on the phone. I'm going to check on your phone. So we come here, we find the totals, and now we can discount. What's the discount rate? We pick the discount rate from the first project. Eh? We pick the. We pick that from the first project, alternative one. They discounted at 9%. 9%. They discounted at 9%. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to also discount. We discount at How are your spreadsheets moving on? Mm -hmm. How are your spreadsheets moving on? They are moving. They are moving in the right direction. Yes. Good. We need to practice people. The biggest challenge of this exam is this computer thing. Just becoming the nightmare for many students. So if you are comfortable with your computer, then you are saying that that's a big step in the right direction. So before the next class, what do I want you to do? I want you to find the discounted payback for this project. Eh? We want to find discounted payback for this project. So please, each one of us before the next class, let's come here and get the discounted payback. Find the internal rate of return. So these are the items that we want you to calculate. Okay. So what is the point to carry home tonight? The point to carry home tonight is how to estimate a forward rate. To me, that is a more important point, how to estimate a forward rate.
how to get this forward rate if you're given a spot rate. So if you are all happy with how to find the forward rate from the spot rate, using the two methods, the inflation rate. Or using the interest rate. Then I can pick that, that's okay. Then you are right. Okay, so we we'll see you in our next class. That will be on Sunday. So on Sunday, we want to look at the modified internal rate of return. What is it? We also want to look at the concept of duration. What is it? So these are the items that we'll be looking at. We're also going to give you a question, a long question so that you start working on the long question. So I'm going to share a long question in advance, probably tomorrow, so that you can start working on the long question on the overseas investments. All right, good night. Thank you to all of you for logging on. Uh, Mr. Peter, before you. I know. Yes, please, I'm here. Uh, before you, 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 you log out, Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know when, when we when we are going to discuss the, the the double taxation concept. Okay, that's is okay. it in the next class? Uh, in the next class, it won't come. It will come with a question that will pick. Okay. It will come with a long question. So we'll pick a long okay. question where we we'll look at the double taxation. So it will be looked at. We can't miss it. It's a very okay. important concept. Okay. Thank you. I really have a problem with that. Yeah. All okay. right. Thank you. All right. No, you have done very well. To let me. Excellent. Thank you for okay. that. That's so. Who, who was that one talking? This is Gilbert Kenze. Ah, okay, Gilbert. Not a problem. We'll deal with that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Would there be any other questions? Okay, if there's no any other questions, that's okay. okay.